so that's me and my dad. I was a big daddy's girl. And that's Sylvia it. Ruiz is sitting at her dinner table in her Apopka trailer park home, thumbing through old pictures of her dad, Balante, who died two years ago of COVID-19. This one right here, this is a red shirt he always used to wear. Um, and they were always very patriotic. Always like, USA, or like, freedom with like, the eagle. And that's like the typical thing he would wear. Sylvia, her father, and her mother are Mexican. They illegally crossed the Rio Grande in 2005, settling in Florida, looking for more economic opportunity. In 2021, Belante got sick with COVID. Her father waited a whole week struggling to breathe before going to a hospital. Sylvia believes Volante avoided medical care for fear of being asked for a social security card. Already in a crisis, he had to even put himself in a more vulnerable position and saying, I don't have one or, you know, I'm undocumented. Republican Representative Randy Fine is a co-sponsor of SB 1718. He says the citizenship survey is to determine how many Medicaid dollars the state spends on undocumented migrants. Well, every illegal immigrant that gets health care at a hospital, every single one is being paid for 100% by taxpayers because they can't get insurance, they're illegal. So I, I, the idea here is to document to those who lie and say, that, oh no, this is a good thing, to document just how expensive it is. However, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, nationally, more than half of undocumented immigrants are insured through the private market. The law says a patient's answers to the citizenship question will not influence the quality of care and people will not be reported to immigration authorities. Additionally, patients aren't required to even answer the question. This leads healthcare workers to doubt any conclusions that can be drawn from this line of questioning. In their database, amongst all the people who did not answer that question, how do you tell the difference between citizens and non-citizens if they're all hodgepodge mixed in? That's Eric Suarez, a nurse practitioner at Pineapple Healthcare, a clinic focused on treating immigrants in Central Florida. Suarez is worried the bill will exacerbate the undocumented community's fear of health care. I, I think we're going to see delays in care. Ethan Suarez is the Pineapple Healthcare case manager. He says patients delaying their need for care will cost everyone in Florida. Because being sick costs more money because you have to take time off of work, you have to take time for healthcare needs, and there's not being productive members of the economy. According to the National Library of Medicine, preventative care is not a magic pill for saving money, but could improve hospital costs by as much as $45 billion a year when treating patients with key long-term conditions like chronic lung disease or even long COVID. Ethan says the bill will probably deter migrants from hospitals more so than before. I think people will become more afraid of the government and they're going to live in fear and live in shadows. At the end of the day, we just want to take care of people. With a fear of hospital systems, medical experts are concerned undocumented immigrants may seek alternative forms of health care, such as street medicine teams and free mobile clinics. However, some fear these resources may be overrun by patients given the current medical landscape. Joe Mario Pedersen, 90.7 WMFE News.